Buying a Lamborghini isn't cool anymore. Sure, it's easy for me to say I can't afford one, but somehow it feels like the rest of the world can. So what happened? When did entry level supercars become a thing? And is buying a Lamborghini still the move? Let's take this back a decade. But first, I won $500. <laughs> And no, not on basketball. How flat this ball is should tell you I'm uh, not really much of an athlete. But I have been placing entries on NBA games on prize picks. And I kid you not, I'm being 100% transparent with you. My second time placing a $20 entry on prize picks on an NBA weekend, I won $500. It was the most insane feeling and it's the most money I've ever won at one time. And how it works is super easy. You pick two to five players. In my case, I did the NBA. And if they score more or less than their prize picks projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. So I know what you're thinking. Stefan, what's the secret sauce? What's the sauce? What makes you so good at this? Cause clearly you're not good at basketball. <laughs> well, the secret sauce was YouTube. I did a little research. I listened to some NBA pregame predictions. I hopped on prize picks, made my entries. All of them hit scoring me the 500 bucks. So here's exactly what that looked like. You can see right here, past entries. And these were my choices. I got Royce O'Neal for two and a half assists, Morant on three pointers, Robinson on rebounds, Kevin Looney for points and rebounds, Keegan Murray on points and assists, and then Clay Thompson on points. All six of them scoring the 500 bucks. So very special shout out to Prize Picks for not only sponsoring this video, but also for the absolute slam dunk of a win with the $500 in my pocket. Be sure to go check them out. If you use my code Stefan, you'll get a first deposit match of up to $100, meaning you put in 100, Prize Picks will give you another 100. It'll be the first link in the description down below. I'll see you guys in there. Okay, so I pulled up data from nearly 10 years ago on Google Trends, which tracks search topic popularity over time and check this out. Lamborghini has slowly been on the decline. It's getting searched less and less on YouTube and is less than half as popular as it was May of 2012. What the fuck happened? So what's going on? Here are three reasons why I think this is happening. First up, the birth of the Huracan. Lamborghini needs to calm the freak down on this one. 2021 was an absolutely insane year for them, moving a total of 8,405 cars, which is absolutely absurd for an exotic supercar brand. And the momentum didn't stop. As they moved into 2022, the exotic performance brand delivered 9,233 vehicles worldwide. I'm selling cars. Now, a big part of this was also due to the launch and success of the Urus, which every rapper and your baby mama made popular. Look at this, I'm matching the car. Is this not the cutest thing ever? Oh my God. But we're going to focus on what I think is killing the coolness of the supercar, which is the Huracan. Somehow Lamborghini figured out how to build the Corolla of supercars. Think about it. The Huracan is known for being absolutely dead reliable even when you throw a bunch of power at it. Thanks to a handful of super rad shops that have put in the time and they've perfected the Huracan platform. Power levels of 1,000, 1,500, 2,000 plus wheel horsepower are now super realistic. Dude, I'm just gonna say it. Huracan doesn't give a shit. It will happily take the boost and leave you smiling pass after pass, seven second passes, mind you, at the track and on the way home, you can still hit the McDonald's drive-thru. For goodness sake, you'll see the same cars getting absolutely abused in rental fleets and some examples are nearing 200,000 miles. The car's bananas. This shit is bananas. So for all these reasons, plus the fact that you can get one in the mid $100,000 range will make the Huracan go down in history as one of the greatest supercars of all time. And I think that's amazing. I can see how this whole video comes across as me bashing Huracans. That's not it at all. However, I think that the Huracan has contributed to ruining the specialness of owning a Lamborghini. Prince Habibu, drive red Lamborghini. Okay, reason number two, you can live in a car, but you can't race a house. We've all heard it before and somehow financing supercars has become a tool for the masses. We live in a world now where if you want something, you want it now. And with banks handing out loans left and right to car enthusiasts with interest rates higher than a hippie and helicopter and terms as long as your house, 180 months. Yes, you heard that right. Apparently you can now finance a car for 15 years. Like, just think about that. That literally makes buying a supercar so widely available to anyone with a down payment and a decent credit score. But if we're comparing houses to supercars now, what about like depreciation? I can feel the comments populating. And yes, there, there are exceptions to that rule. Sure, there are vehicles you can purchase that will lose little to no value depending on rarity, spec, how long you keep it. But for the sake of the argument, let's talk about some of the most common supercars that you'll see being purchased today. Haggerty did a study and showed that the average supercar on this list depreciates, get this, 
about 6% in year one. And that goes up to 20% after three years. So when you're talking about a $250,000 car, which is very much entry level in today's terms, do the math with me. On average, that means $50,000 you're gonna lose in three years. Honestly, it's kind of a great way to lose someone's annual salary. Lastly, competition. While Lamborghini, among other supercar brands, were once iconic for high revving V10s, V12s, high horsepower engines, insane performance on and off the track. There are now many other manufacturers bringing similarly powerful and impressive vehicles to the table, which, which makes the speed just not hit the same anymore. I'm of the opinion this is Tesla's fault. Screw Tesla, dude. They're ruining everybody's little brain, you know, their little meter in their brain for like how fast the car is. Your car is a total piece of Even in like some of my fastest cars that I've had, like the, the thousand wheel horsepower Corvette, my 600 wheel horsepower GTR. I remember taking some people for a ride and they were just like, they're just not impressed because they've been in a plaid. And I know it's the future, but it's sucking the fun out of cars. I'm good. Electric cars aside, things like the M5 Comp, the Dodge Demon, Mustangs, Corvettes, uh, Nissan GTRs, AMGs, all of these platforms and more, you can get similar performance to Lamborghini. Granted, there are pros and cons to each, of course, like any other car, but that's the problem. The playing field has been like significantly leveled in just the last 10 years, and that makes the performance aspect of Lamborghini just not nearly as impressive as it used to be. So, I, I don't know. This is something I've thought about for a while, and especially like being on YouTube and creating videos, it's like, Lamborghini just doesn't have the same kind of buzz that it used to. And it really makes me wonder about what the future of supercars will be, that the bar keeps having to be raised. And that gap is slowly closing and the gray area is increasing between what is truly a supercar and what is not. Is the Lamborghini still the dream car? Is it still worth your entire life savings one day? Let me know in the comments down below. As usual, if you made it this far in the video, you're a real one. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked it, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and the bell.